What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I have Zach here with La Marzocco, who came all the way from Seattle. And he's going to be teaching us how to steam milk and pour latte art. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> if you guys are interested in learning, then please keep watching. Uh, so the first step, in order to actually pour latte art, you're going to need, of course, espresso or something uh, concentrated with like a, a nice viscosity. Um, and then you need well steamed milk. Just a quick side question mm -hmm. uh, for beginners out there, like who might not have an espresso machine. Yeah. Could they use like um, instant espresso or any type of? You, you definitely can. Um, it, it is really challenging, unfortunately, with, with some like single boiler yep. espresso machines like you've, you've mentioned uh, that you had previously. Just because the steam power does create this texture yeah. really well, that force, that oomph behind it is, yeah. is what allows for the consistency of the, the, the texture that you're adding. And it's the reason why you see a lot of our machines in cafes too, you know, they're, they're designed to actually have uh, quality steam power. You can absolutely get, get uh, well steamed milk out of them, but one of the most common things that happens as you're steaming is that, that um, pressure is dropping and dropping okay. and dropping and dropping and dropping on some single boiler espresso machines. Uh, for example, but uh, that's what makes a double boiler espresso machine really great. You have a, a steam boiler designated um, for steaming your milk while you can also brew the espresso at the same time and those two yeah. systems don't interrupt each other. So we're going to be using two milks today. We just have whole milk and then oat milk. Uh, would you say there's a difference between steaming two different types? Whole milk is, is usually the, the best milk for, for latte art specifically. Yeah. Process wise, not really. Um, okay. You're doing two things when you steam milk. You're adding heat and you're adding air. Yeah. So we want to control both of those. Um, whole milk um, usually tastes the best around 135 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. which that number is irrelevant unless you have a thermometer. <laughs> yeah. But um, when you're steaming milk, you can hold the side of the pitcher, and when it's slightly too hot to the touch, that's how you know it's pretty darn close to that temperature. Okay. And then it's pretty much the same thing for, for oat milk as well. Uh, I found with uh, oat milk and, and non-dairy alternatives, you don't necessarily need to add quite as much air to the milk. It, it tends okay. to, to become a little bit more velvety and silky, like that microfilm a little bit easier. So you can kind of cool. back off on that a little bit. Do you think cup matters when pouring latte art? The, the shape of the cup really does matter. Um, it helps, it doesn't matter that much. You can definitely pour latte art in a, a narrow mouth cup, but it does make it a, a lot easier on a, a nice wide mouth ceramic okay. like this. Just because when you're pouring, you want the pitcher to really get into the liquid yeah. really close. You want the spout to be almost touching the surface. That's why you can see yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, because you're, you're essentially, you're drawing, you're painting, if yeah. you will, on the surface of the espresso. So sometimes with a narrower cup, it's a little harder for that to get in. You just have to tilt a little bit more, which okay. can be messy, but you absolutely can still pour a lot there. Right? Okay, cool. Again, I mentioned that um, we're doing two things when we're steaming milk. We're adding air and we're adding heat. Well steamed milk is, is very important in order to pour latte air. So we want to control those things. We want to control how much heat and how much air we're adding. What I suggest on our machines is to pull the steam wand out directly towards you and then about a 45 degree angle outside of the machine. And this way you can use the spout as a guide and it naturally puts the steam on at an angle because we want to create a whirlpool of the air that we're adding. Now, a general rule, you wanna add air until a pitcher is about equal temperature and then move up so you stop adding air and hold it until it's slightly too hot to the touch. So I'll go ahead and start. You can hear some air being added there. And once it's about, the pitcher is about equal temperature with your hand, then you want to stop adding air and slightly move up until it's just too hot to the touch. Now slightly too hot to the touch, so I'm going to turn that off. Purge those on. We want the texture of the milk to be equal with the crema of the espresso. So it's a nice velvety microfoam. Oftentimes people say it looks like wet paint. I know it doesn't sound it does. tasty, but it does. Um, you want that nice 
consistency, but if you steam and add air to milk and you just let it sit, the lighter, airier, airy portion is lighter in density, so it's gonna rise to the top. So you just wanna spin it to keep that texture intact. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour a simple heart for now, and I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it as well. So we wanna start right in the direct center, kind of integrating all of that. Go back to the center after pouring high and slow. Drop down, you pour low and fast in the direct center. And then once it's done, high and slow and split in half. So you can see there's not a ton of depth to that, but that's the fundamentals of just pouring lots of air. You wanna start in the center just to get some contrast like that. And it'd be okay if you pour a big blob, just like that. That's, that's how you get started. So I suggest really, really practicing this to hone in that technique before you start to move on to something else. So we're gonna go ahead and take that same technique from the heart, just pouring low and fast, and we're gonna stack on top of each other. So this will utilize pushing a little bit as well. So again, we'll start high and slow. We wanna pour around the center to integrate. Once it looks nice and even, you drop down low, pour fast, you can kind of push into there. Drop down low and fast, and push in. Drop down low and fast, push in. Once you get up to the top, low and fast, high and slow, and then you split that in half. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour a rosetta. And the difference here is that a rosetta utilizes wiggling. So just moving slightly back and forth like a pendulum. We're also gonna slightly push into the design just like a tulip as well and a heart. So you start high and slow the same way. Get your, your base, nice even texture there. And when you're ready, drop down low, wiggle in, and wiggle out. High and slow, split in half. Okay, so slow Zeta does kind of combine aspects of the Rosetta without much pushing. You're, you're mostly just like pouring really big, broad strokes. Uh, I'm gonna go give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, so Zach is helping me pull my espresso shots and then I'm gonna give it a go. I have two milk pitchers here with oat milk this time and we're gonna try out some latte art. So go ahead and um, purge the steam wand. Uh, get you all set up. Okay. And pull it out in an angle. Also, hold it however you're comfortable, um, okay. whatever you're used to. And what I say is that tip yeah, is roughly two thirds of the way submerged. So when you start to add air, it's not gonna blast it really hard. You want yeah. it to be somewhat delicate so you can move up or down to control how much. But yeah, whenever you're set. Okay. Am I adding too much? That's great. So when you're adding air, that volume is naturally increasing as well. So sometimes with like what you just experienced, you're in a perfect spot, you didn't have to move at all. It increased the volume, it added all of the texture and then now you're ready to go. That looks really good. Okay, so I have bubbles on top, but when that happens, I guess you can just tap it. Okay, tap it, tap it. And swirl, pouring high, and swirling, and then when do I usually stop? So once it's pretty full, like right where you're at, you wanna tilt that so that liquid is close to the edge, so when you drop down low, you can get really close. So go ahead and like drop down low, and. Touch that spout pretty much to the surface of the liquid Ooh. there. Okay. Yeah, and then you can stack those. Yeah. There you go. That looks so good. And then slow through. Perfect. Oh my god. But that surface that's tension. I know that surface tension. <laughs> Look at that. It's just barely hanging on. That looks great. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. Oh no! Alright, so drop down. Get close, yeah. Oh no! Now wiggle in, now go, take it backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's so thin! <laughs> oh, but I got the motion, you, Look, you can see it. <laughs> Yeah, so you're you're there. The only thing that I can say is, is when you're, I know I say low and fast, yeah. but for you, 
like back off a little okay. bit, like slow down just a touch. Yeah. And if you're a little bit more patient, you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna get it right away. Okay. But, all right, drop down and get close to me. Get the picture now, wiggle. Oh no, it's so okay. liquidy. Sorry. Slow down and just wiggle out away from yourself. There you go. Okay, that yeah. one looks a lot better, yeah. look. See, but I just didn't steam it right. For today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it um do you have any tips that you can give for the beginners out there um the best thing that i can think to say is have fun don't take it so serious latte art is something that is very complicated but very doable thousands of baristas around the world do it thousands of home uh, enthusiasts do it uh you got it just have fun and enjoy and practice 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 that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.